on flash file systems for Im embedded space applications. Um, so here's a, a quick outline of what I'm going to be talking about. First, going to talk about some motivation behind you know, what we're doing. Why do we you know, feel like this work was necessary? I'm going to be giving some high-level uh, file system background um, for those of you that might not be as familiar so that when I talk about um, the work we've been doing, um, what we can all be on the same page. Um, I'll be talking about our target environments, which operating systems and what flavors and how that um, all would work in what, in what we've been designing and implementing to. Um, I'm going to give an overview of the work we've done, which we've called the Interstellar File System, and then talk about some uh, next steps. So, but before we do any of that, I have to talk about why, why did we do this? Why did we feel like we needed to make yet another um, Flash file system? Because there are a lot of, of file systems uh, that target Flash devices that already exist um, for embedded flight software. Um, one of the principal reasons was they have somewhat limited wear leveling. Um, in some cases, some variants of file systems available that you could run on Flash didn't have any wear leveling at all, um, which might be a concern. It might not, just depending on what, what would live in that Flash. Um, and secondly, up here is, a, is another key point, is they don't, uh, none of them have the ability to intrinsically utilize a supplemental non-volatile storage um, to store you know, critical file system metadata. It all lives on one Flash device, which is a single point of failure and in a high reliability environment that can be somewhat of an issue. And finally, this is um, more from a programmer's perspective. Um, working with some file systems, you know, uh, trying to configure them to do exactly what I want, it is like, I really wish I could tweak that knob, but it's inside, it's hidden, I can't get to it. So we wanted, wanted to design a file system that was open enough that um, we, you, as an application programmer, you'd be able to configure it to do literally anything you wanted. Um, and so the purpose of this presentation is to give an in, um, progress report of wh where, we, where we've been, what we're doing, and where we're going to go. It's not done yet, but it's, uh, we are a large portion of the way there. So to start off, I'm going to talk very briefly about sort of the standard uh, file system hierarchy, but from sort of a, a flash perspective. So on the top here, you have your virtual file system layer, which allows you to you know, use your standard calls like open, close, read, write, et cetera. Um, and then under that is the actual flash file system, which you, if you're just an application programmer, you don't ever have to see. Um, and then, you know, under that, you, you start to get into more of the um, device-dependent things, you know, having to do wear leveling and garbage collection and block management, and you get all the way down the stack into um, flash technology. So with, th with this in mind, um, I want to talk about if you do put, happen to put a, a file system on flash media, one of the paramount concerns is that of wear leveling, as I said before, because if you don't, you get something that looks like a flash device on the right here, where certain blocks of your flash will hold data and respond as you want them to, and certain blocks will have corrupt data or just not work um, in very um, hard to pin down ways. So you would need to do some sort of wear leveling so you get something more like this over here. Um, an additional concern, because you know we work in a flight software of high reliability environment, is if the manufacturer says this flash chip is good for 100,000 erase cycles, we're going to derate that by a factor of 10 because we're really paranoid. Um, so that may, now suddenly what might have only been a sort of a medium concern now becomes a, a paramount concern where every write and erase really counts. So as you can see, this requires you know, a different write paradigm than if you're going to write on magnetic media where you can write as many times as you want. Um, and also it requires a different superblock paradigm. So what is a superblock? Um, if you're not familiar with file systems, a superblock is this magical block that lives at the start of a, of a magnetic disk. So on the top here, we have your, if this is a magnetic disk, this is what the file system might look like. And then on the bottom, you have a flash file system. Now, the superblock is written on every single transaction. You, anytime you open, read, write a file, the superblock gets updated. It's written to the start of a disk. Now, clearly, you can't do that with flash. You will wear out the first block of your flash and you know, it'll, the whole device will be useless or you'll just then you'll have to wear out the second block and then so on and so forth. So instead, what you have to do is if for every transaction you write out a smooth sort of transition, a smooth um, <coughs> a, array of, of new writes instead of doing a sort of update in place sort of thing. So it this is an example of, you know, simple, a very simple operation just like writing files in two directories. It, it requires very different um, sort of architecture in terms of how you update, what order you have to update in, what structures are required, et cetera. 
So having talked uh, briefly about sort of uh, the relevant elements of flash file systems, I'm going to talk about our target environments. So um, the file, what we work mainly with is RTEMS and VXWorks in terms of uh, embedded operating systems. So those are the two we were targeting. Um, and so we, we looked at what was available in there and you know, what improvements could be made and that, that sort of thing. There are others, of course, you know, like Green Hills and, and others, but we don't, or I haven't personally used any of those, so we didn't really look at that. Um, so there were two flavors of sort of integration and two, or you know, use of this um, file system that we were looking at. One was integration via a, the virtual file system layer so that you would be able to, if you wanted, to use your standard system calls. Um, but also, and, it, you know, and they're POSIX compliant and all that, but and also we wanted to be able to, if you didn't want to drag in the VFS layer or if you didn't want to use an OS or if you just you didn't want to write your own bindings so you had a, you know, some unique flavor of homespun or you know, tweaked operating system, you'd be able to use it in a standalone fashion and it wouldn't be really painful. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to use like a standard Linux file system by it on itself, but without the VFS layer, it can be very painful to do. So we wanted to not, um, we wanted to avoid that. So before I go on to the next two slides, which um, detail sort of the state of the union, if you will, of file systems available in v VXWorks and RTEMS, um, I just want to say that uh, all the bullets are accurate to the best of my knowledge from the documentation, things I've been able to find online. If there are uh, VXWorks or RTEMS developers and I say something that's completely wrong, please let me know. Um, but so first off, in RTEMS, there were sort of three main uh, file systems that we, that we were looking at. Um, one was a JFFS2 port from the, R or the Linux 3.11 kernel. Um, one of the main uh, things we saw with this file system is the boot time scales with the device size, which means if you have a four gigabyte flash device, um, it'll boot in X seconds, but if you have a hundred gigabyte, it's gonna boot much longer because, going back to here, you have to write this super block every single time you do a transaction. So you have to scan the entire device looking for the most recent copy. Whoops. Um, maybe, you, maybe you can tolerate a two minute boot time, maybe you can't. Um, but that might be a concern when you're considering using this. Um, the documentation I've been able to find suggests that this does not provide ideal wear leveling. Um, it, it, was, it was hard to track down any sort of specifics on that. Um, the RFS or RTEMS file system you know, does support flash via the, um, their built-in flash disk, disk driver that works very well, but that driver does not have any built-in wear leveling. And so, it, and also with the, of course, a FAT file system, which is, you know, MS-DOS, that is not going to have any wear leveling at all. Um, and so the other sort of target operating system we were looking at was VXWorks. Um, in addition to uh, sort of, you know, the, the, the standard things and you're trying to figure out, you know, what operating system, what, you know, how am I going to organize my um, overall system to meet the requirements, there are licensing, you know, issues with VXWorks, which may, you know, in influence whether you choose the you know, VXWorks or RTEMS or Green Hills or any of these others. Um, so that was one other thing we, we, we considered. So <coughs> VXWorks has their high reliability file system, um, which has high fault tolerance, but I was not really able to find any definitive description of features, so I'm not entirely sure what goes in there and what it does and does not do. Um, I do know that the, both the TrueFS and RT11 um, our, well, our TrueFS is, provides magnetic disk emulation, allows you to use flash devices as if they were magnetic, which of course doesn't give you wear leveling. And then the RT11, although very fast, is now deprecated. So um, that hopefully sets the stage for um, that yes, these, there, there are a lot of file systems available. They have, they have very full feature sets, but you know, there are still some, some gaps in uh, you know, offerings in terms of reliability and wear leveling and boot time and some of these other things. So that I want to get into a sort of an overview of the work that we've done at Southwest in the last year or so and what we're calling our interstellar file system. So as I said at the beginning, um, we wanted to make a file system that was clean, simple, and very lightweight. Something that was as simple as possible but not simpler, um, which you know, might seem if you want something that's highly configurable but yet very simple, those are you know, at odds, uh, but we, we thought that if you know, we, we um, sort of build, you know, design, design and build and test you know, from the ground up, from day one, everything that we want in it, we can have a, both a tightly integrated and um, very flexible uh, system. So you know, we, we provide two APIs. One gives you actually direct access to the core, 
um, at runtime, which is something that not many file systems do. And of course, we have also going to have the access to the standard VFS interface, um, which is in progress. That's not quite done yet. We you know, expose configuration options for basically every part of the file system. If, you can, if it's configurable, you could configure it. Um, I've worked with file systems where you know, there's certain things that you can configure, but certain things that the developer said, yes, this is what it's going to be. This is the best value, and you can't change it. Um, so we wanted to provide maximum programmer flexibility, and um, by extension, a maximum mission adaptability you know, as, as time went on and devices changed and, and that sort of thing. So with that in mind, oops, um, one of the key features that uh, this file system has, um, as opposed to previous ones, is storage awareness. In the sense that if you have additional non-volatile storage available, such as MRAM or an EEPROM or something, it allows you to store that super block from earlier um, in, that, in that region. What this means is that your boot time is now constant, regardless of the size of the flash device. You can boot a 4 gigabyte flash device in the same time as a you know, 100 gigabyte because you don't have to look through the whole device for the most recent super block. Um, so if you need to you know, be, able, be able to reboot and be back up in like two or three seconds with a large flash device, you know, this, this kind of thing, being able to do this is very valuable. And of course, because now you have separated the um, metadata from the data, you now don't have a single point of failure, so it increases your reliability, which is always a good thing. Um, and, and finally here, because you're not, um, you don't have to write as many things to Flash, you have higher sort of utilization because the more data that you care about lives in Flash. And also you have um, greater Flash lifetime because, you're, again, you're not writing as many things to it. So all, all of these sort of combine to give you something that um, is not typically available in um, the cur current state-of-the-art uh, file systems. You could sort of shoehorn it in, possibly, but this is sort of one of the core built-in features of what, what we've been working on. Um, so one of the other things is like any, um, because this is a, a fl flight software application, um, we want to make sure that we had a high, high integrity um, file system. So in addition to you know, having the standard error reporting, POSIX error codes, all that, we created um, an event logger for both errors and normal operations, which allows you to see inside the file system as it's working. So you can see exactly what happens when you open a file, when you delete a file, when you create a directory, all that sort of thing, which you probably don't need or care about 99 times out of 100. But that one time you need it, you're gonna be, you might be really, really glad it's there. So, um, and as I said before, this is a very simple file system. And it's so simple, in fact, it's stateless. It has an, uh, what that really means, it has an atomic transaction model. So when you, you know, pass some data to a write function, and that write function returns, you know that that data now lives on a flash device. Um, it's not sitting in a write buffer to be written out in half a second or a second or something. It, is, it lives on that flash device. Um, and sort of by extension, um, certain configurations of this don't actually require you to run the file system checker um, because it's, it's not possible to put, get the file system into an invalid state, um, logically speaking. Now, of course, if you're, if you're in a high radiation environment, you probably still need to run the checker to help catch, you know, bit flips and stuff like that. But um, other than that, sort of logically speaking, from a, you know, sudden loss of power perspective, you don't, you can't actually put the file system in a bad state. And then finally, of course, in any high reliability application, dynamic memory allocation is at best frowned upon and um, at worst will get you dragged to your project manager's office and have a st uh, stern conversation. So of course we don't we don't do that either. Um, one of one of the other main f things about uh, flash file systems is they have this idea of one page per write unit, which is whatever you whatever you need to write to flash, whether it's some data, an updated um, inode, whatever it is, you're going to write that to one page, and when you need to write the next thing, you're going to write that to the next page. And so you can see over here. If each of these things is like 4K, you know, you consume an entire 4K page and then the next entire page and then so on after that. But if you're only doing like a one byte write, um, you're going to you're going to waste the entire 4K page, which may be okay for your application. But you know, as flash devices keep getting larger and more dense, you know, page sizes go up to like 128K, for example, and you know, you only using one byte of that may suddenly become unacceptable. So we wanted to provide the ability to, if you want. Um, compact the flash segment so you do so you will always use the entire um, flash page 
which you know obviously incre increases your utilization significantly, um, but it does reduce wear leveling to only approximate because now you're going to have to doing, be doing read, modify, write um, on, on each page here. But it's, it's, what it, it's one of those trade-offs you have to do, but you know, based on your application, what type of data is going to be stored in this file system and how critical that data is. Um, and so one of the other, uh, or actually finally, I, I guess, one of the last feature that is somewhat unique to this file system is our implementation of garbage collection. Now in any file system, you know, when you start to run out of space, you have to clean up old, old files, empty directories, you know, dead data, all, all that sort of thing. But in a flash file system, because of its log nature, and you write out a smooth sort of uh, segment, and then once you get to the end, you have to wrap back around, garbage collection is very tricky. So if you have something like this up here, you know, you have some obsolete data, some good data, obsolete data, good data, and eventually once that gets full, you need to somehow figure out what is live, write that back to the, in the, to the end of the log, and then free up all that old stuff. Um, and that becomes very complicated very quickly. And so most file systems, they, the garbage collector will just sort of run autonomously or run whenever there's out of space, and you don't really have a lot of control over when and how it's run. We, in, we decided to um, build a file system in which you would have that control. So you can tell it, I want you to clean, to attempt to clean 70, make those flash disks 75% clean, and I'm going to give you 100 milliseconds to do it. Or I want you to you know, clean the entire thing, I don't care how long it takes you. But we wanted to provide that configuration so that if you need to um, know that the maximum um, time, that whenever you do any file system operation, you know the maximum time it can take, and you have that assurance. Um, and then finally, we actually also provide the ability to turn off garbage collection, which is not something I've ever seen in another file system. It may exist, I just haven't seen it. Um, and you, you can say, I'm the programmer, I know what's best, I will run garbage collection when I, when I want to or when I feel like it. Um, and what, what, what that really means is that you, you, have, you have absolute control over um, how much sort of overhead is associated with the file system, how much time you spend writing data, how much time you spend cleaning, all that sort of thing. You have uh, com complete control over, over all of that. Um, so that's sort of a high level summary of the sort of main features of, of what we've been working on at, uh, down at Southwest Research. Um, so our next steps is, you know, we're, we still have some work to do to get uh, complete POSIX compliance in, in the core. Um, and we're going to have to finish up our VFS layer bindings for our attempts. Those aren't complete yet either. And then there are, you know, a number of small core improvements like reducing memory footprint and things like that that uh, are still in progress and are not yet complete. Um, so with that, I just want to uh, summarize briefly what I've uh, talked about today. Um, there are several flash file systems, actually more than several. Uh, a lot available for RTEM, VXWorks, and others. Um, the wear leveling offerings for many of these, you know, aren't, they don't provide ideal wear leveling, um, or it's only approximate, or, or not at all. Um, but regardless, there, there, there is some uh, appearance that where, you know, if you, need, if you need, absolutely need ideal wear leveling, that, you know, that might not be available. Um, most file systems are not aware of other additional non-volatile storage to, you know, store the super block or other critical file system data. They all um, put it on, the fl on flash, um, which can, can raise boot, both boot time and reliability concerns. And then uh, finally, they have, some of these file systems have limited configurability. Like they might not expose as many options as you as a programmer would like. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe they always do and you never run into that problem, but I, I found that it, sometimes it, you, if you have a box of you know, 300 tools and you only use four of them, except for that one time when you need like the entire toolbox, it's really nice to have that you know, that at your disposal if you do need it. So we, I, I introduced briefly, you know, our interstellar file system, which was as simple as possible. Um, it, has, it was a stateless model, or a state, stateless transaction model. It was aware of both MRAM and EEPROM. It was highly configurable. Um, you could configure it to provi provide ideal wear leveling, um, not need to run the file system checker at all. Um, and also, be able, you were, it was, it was very uh, configurable in terms of garbage collection and segment compaction and several other features which I just didn't mention here in the interest of time. Um, and so with that, um, I would be happy to take any questions people may have. Mine are going to be pretty easy. So one requirement 
um, the Ar Artemis file system can support a non-power of two block device size. That was a requirement for MMS because you guys had some weird ECC memory, like at 176 byte blocks. The, can this is this based on power of two blocks? Uh, no, you you actually tell it the block size and it'll, it'll okay. you tell it the block size, the page size, and it'll it'll just it'll assume that the underlying device. Is that if it's not, it'll, it, you have to have to provide like a translation layer in that case that that takes care of that. Okay, so you and I, we both have the same problem that we're not advertising that feature, right? <laughs> it's not making our list. Yeah. Um, the second one, are you using the file system test in our temps because they were designed to run on multiple file system types? All you got to do is instance them again with configuration. So you could probably get pretty high coverage just running those if you want. Uh, that, that, those, so we haven't gotten to that point yet because we don't have the, the bindings. Um, so we, we integrate integrated into our temps. That's in progress and that is one of the tests that we are, we're, we're going to run is that suite. They, they're supposed to get pretty high coverage without doing a whole lot. I think you did answer my question. You can configure two different versions of this file system to be completely incompatible. Uh, yes, that is true. You can, you. I don't know why you'd want to, but it's possible. Yes, you, you could. Um, and there's actually, you can change certain configuration options at runtime. If you suddenly are like, you know, I've been going along, I have been having perfect wear leveling. My mission, you know, I've accomplished it now. Um, if we're ex in the extended mission time frame, I can relax those constraints. You can do that without you needing to, you know, create a clean file system and, you know, start over. It, it's, there are some options you can't, but there are some or a lot that you actually can do that with. Thank you for being so close. Okay. Yeah, you to throw it to me. Yeah, quick question uh, for putting the super block on EEPROM or in RAM. Um, do you see a need to actually copy that super block and put that into Flash as well, or is the super block always staying off of Flash with that mindset? Um, it's, all, it's always standing off of Flash. You, you could actually put it in both. It, IFS will let you do that. Um, the, <coughs> main, the main reason that you only want to, you, you'd want to put it in MRAM is of course for, you know, boot, for reducing boot time and increasing reliability. But if you want to only run it out of Flash, it will allow you to do that. If you happen to not have um, any additional non-volatile storage, it will be able to run as a traditional Flash file system. Okay, so you, you were saying whenever you completed a write operation, it's written to Flash. So what's the performance penalty there? And are there any tricks that you do to improve performance? Um, the performance there would really depend on um, the, 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 the speed of the Flash and the underlying uh, device driver. Within the file system, it for like a write operation, there's some, a little bit of housekeeping and depending on what the operation um, entailed, there some might be some change to internal data structures, but it just calls the underlying sort of Flash driver and if that, you know, is basically says, you know, hardware, go write this data to the Flash, here's the location in the data, that might be very fast, but if it's a, um, a software Flash driver, it might be, be slow, but from the perspective of the file system, the performance hit is um, very small. Other questions? Yes. Uh, you talked about determinism earlier, and I've had issues with uh, with file systems uh, where the directory entry operations are non-deterministic, very non-deterministic. Can you comment on that for your uh, file system? Uh, so in, I'm not sure what you mean by non-deterministic. Um, <coughs> I mean, sometimes, yeah, creating a file uh, or just uh, looking up a, uh -huh. a file entry uh, may take, you know, uh, in, the, in the case of a non-empty uh, directory, may take uh, hundreds or thousands of times longer than right. looking it up in an empty directory. So um, there's a, there was an additional feature that I didn't put on here, um, which is the idea of a directory entry cache, which is if you have a deep hierarchy or a directory with many files, once you have to walk the, in, you know, the, the entire tree to find it once, it'll put it in the cache, and then prior operations will, to look that up will be constant time because you, already, you don't have to search the flash device for it. And this is, again, something that you can enable or disable depending on your memory constraints and what types of things you wanted to do. Um, and then as far as determinism in terms of, of write time, um, all of the operations, um, there's, a, there's a maximum upper bound to the number of uh, uh, sort of write units that ha would have to be written. Um, how much actually got written to Flash would depend on, you know, whether you're doing compaction and the underlying size of your pages. Um, but you, you you can configure it such that um, whatever your time is to write a page, you multiply that 
by like six, and that's your upper maximum upper bound. If you configured garbage collection so that you run it manually, you can know that that is the absolute maximum that any given call will take. I guess, uh, all right, we can move on to the next one. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you.